Hello everyone, welcome to Blue Dragon Actual. Uh, so as you can see in your screen, this video is related to the interview series. So I'll be recording an interview series that would be around, I think, six to seven episodes of that. This is the first one, obviously. And today's video is related to psychology of interview. Now, no matter how much you prepare for an interview, uh, you need technical knowledge to clear an actual interview. And that's where, uh, you know, that thing comes into picture where do you have the technical knowledge? Do Is your knowledge only bookish or is your knowledge, uh, you know, you have the answer to most of the whys in, in actual industry. Uh, just as I mentioned in my LinkedIn post that uh, whenever I post a video related to, uh, you know, salary or this kind of video, like an interview video, I, I know that uh, this video has the potential to go viral. Like the salary video has almost uh, gone viral because uh, my subscriber base is 450. It has more than 600 views on that. But if you do not uh, look into the technical aspects, uh, you are not going to crack an interview. You are not going to, even if you crack an interview, you are not going to get higher package. You are not going to get higher rating, et cetera, et cetera. Nothing else will follow, right? So you have to be uh, consistent with this. Like these videos are also very, very important, but the technical uh, knowledge video are more important. So uh, you need to go to my playlist and check for the SA2 series. Uh, you need to check for the regulation series because if you are not doing that, then uh, you are not doing justice to yourself. Then you are not going to uh, be a, a strong, potent actuary in the in the future. So uh, you need to look at discount rate. I, I'll be releasing my last video of discount rate maybe next week, Thursday. So if you are not looking into that, if you have not looked into the first two parts, because I can say 99% or 90% of the people uh, do not know how discount rate is calculated, uh, especially in different regimes, solvency one, solvency two. So if you have not seen that video, if someone asks you that question in interview, we are not going to click clear that interview based on these points that, are going, that we are going to discuss today. So always remember technical knowledge far, far surpasses any uh, personality traits that you have, because in actually, there are very limited number of people who have technical knowledge, strong technical knowledge. Uh, most people have bookish knowledge, but very few people have strong technical knowledge. So that will always surface, that will always stand out, you'll always shine based on that. But uh, uh, if you have that, then this video would help you. If you only focus on this video from, from the standpoint of, uh, you know, uh, clearing an interview, then you might clear the interview, but the rest of the thing would be very difficult for you. Anyways, coming back to the topic. So episode one uh, of the interview series, I'm very excited about this. And this is uh, what we call psychology of an interviewer. Right? So we'll start with the interview because uh, when you get an interview call, uh, usually there would be these days the interviews are scheduled to Zoom. And usually the HR would call you and uh, mention the name of the interviewer or set, set you up with a Zoom call. And you can see the name of that interviewer. You can, uh, I, I think I, I what I would do would be to go to LinkedIn and check what type of experience that person has. And sometimes the LinkedIn profiles are not updated. Uh, so I'll still try to gauge what companies that person has worked in and what sort of knowledge that person probably would have. And uh, if there is any possible uh, red flags uh, about that person, et cetera, et cetera. I will try to understand uh, what zone uh, my question would be uh, and what, what, what zone I, I need to prepare for. So that is something that I need to prepare. However, it it like you might prepare for one thing and that person turned out to be something else because of the obvious reason the LinkedIn profile is not updated or you have gone to Facebook profile that Facebook that is locked you can't, can't see much uh, so you have no idea about that person right so in in such case I think uh, what we are going to discuss now is is going to help you and this video can be used by any person uh, any any fresher or any experienced person who is probably uh, appearing for interview uh, but it is kind of discussed from psych, uh, the psychology point of views from actual standpoint. So uh, it might be more inclined to that. Obviously, my channel is actual channel, so that's why. But it, it will also augment uh, your interview preparation, even if you belong to any other field, right? So without wasting much time. Uh, so let's move on. So first is the setup. The setup is initial. Usually, there would be two interviews, especially in the first round. Uh, there would be usually there are two to three rounds uh, in every setup. And as you go senior, the number of rounds reduces. So that, that's why as you, uh, as senior as you become, uh, chances of clearing interview is, is more because you don't have to clear three hurdles. You have to clear only one hurdle. Uh, but I am assuming that you are appearing for at least two to three rounds of interview. Uh, 
so there usually would be two interviewers. Why? Why there would be two interviewers? Because one would play a good cop and one would play bad cop. That means one will try to stress you and try to see what how how you are reacting. Kind of like roadies, roadies interview. If you have seen the roadies interview, in that case, I think everyone is bad cop. But uh, uh, usually uh, interviewers do have that role. Uh, one would try to stress you and see how you react under pressure, whether you will be a cultural fit. Other person would be probably testing you technically. Right. So one would be a bad cop, other would be a good cop. And that's the usual usual structure that we follow. Then, uh, obviously, as I mentioned, uh, one person, probably the bad cop, would be looking at whether you are a technical fit or, or whether you are a cultural fit. The bad cop would be looking at your cultural fit, whether you are a cultural fit, whether uh, you bring a lot of baggage with you, whether you are rigid, whether you are flexible, whether you are willing to listen uh, and uh, you can take the direction midway, whether you can change your thought process uh, midway in the interview or you are too rigid. Uh, and the good cop might be uh, helping you to come at the answer and you know be asking the technical questions to you. And finally, uh, this setup uh, would avoid biases. So for example, I might uh, have a bias against some candidate uh, because might because probably I have known that person, I've heard something about that person uh, because as they say, actually is a small world, right? Uh, news travel faster and and rumors travel even faster. Right. Uh, so, I mean, that's that that's how actually is. Uh, obviously, if you are technically strong, uh, then that you probably may not need to worry much about that. Or, however, having said that, uh, if you have a really bad uh, reputation, like you are uh, very arrogant and you are uh, you don't respect your colleagues, then people might not select you based on that. However, uh, that might be a rumor. Uh, you may not like person may have formed uh, a perception of you may have been formed because of uh, uh, n number of reasons maybe from your uh, you know social media profile maybe from your linkedin post etc but you may not actually be that person and uh, that's why when there are two interviews that biases would get eliminated so you might be biased towards a person but other person may not necessarily be biased but the reverse might also happen. Two person might be equally biased, right? That might also happen. But there is a very limited chance, and at least the company is working uh, by uh, trying to eliminate that bias by having two interviews set up, right? So I must give credit to those companies which are actually following this. So uh, that's why two interviews set up is usually followed. Okay, moving on. Uh, so this would be how an ideal interviewer should be, right? And if you uh, are interviewed i think in a couple of times you know life i think you would be finding uh, like very few interviewer you can say that would be like this but ideally an interviewer should be like this uh, so first of all an ideal interviewer will only ask you question from your subject or your experience area if you are if you have worked and not from his or her area of experience so i remember when um, in my first interview i was probably uh, giving an interview in Bharti AXA and at that point of time I had only one paper of actuary and that was CT3 and I was preparing for CT1 and CT6. Uh, CT3 is the probability maths and probability paper that have cleared. CT6 was I think statistical method. It was called I think these papers have been combined now. CT3 and CT6 are CT4 and CT6 are probably combined and I was also preparing for CT, CT1. So when I appeared for the interview that person asked me so uh, I have cleared CT3. Now, let me tell you that I have cleared CT3 at that point of time. And I've read very nominal portion of CT6. CT1, I probably not even started because I was always working. I was always working uh, when I started my actual career. So that person asked straight, straight away a question from what is reserve. And I have no clue about what reserve is at that point of time. So I told him that, you know, I, I, I don't know what reserve is because uh, I have not studied it. But based on my understanding, because I keep on hearing things uh, about uh, life insurance, so I think the reserve is some money that insurer keep aside to take care of risk. And he told me that's a very rudimentary and uh, flawed answer. Uh, so I, I still remember that line. That's a very rudimentary and flawed answer. I don't expect an actual student to give that answer to me. That's that's what I think he told me. So I think that question itself was wrong in the first place because I have not studied uh, CT6. I have clearly mentioned that I have studied CT3 uh, and uh, I have, the, even although I was kind of studying CT6 and, and uh, CT1, that was even not mentioned in my CV. 
I have just written, I have cleared only one paper, which is uh, uh, CT6. And obviously, I'm an MBA and I've done other uh, finance, uh, you know, certifications at that point of time. But I mean, reserve was not supposed to be a question that he would be asking me, but he did, right? So that's not an ideal interview because an ideal interview will test you uh, on the areas that you are good at, not in the areas that he is good at. Next, uh, an ideal interview will never judge you on your looks. Uh, so I, I, and I, I mean, while taking interviews, I have heard my uh, fellow interviewer saying like how 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 he is looking or this this person is smelling etc etc etc, and uh, I mean. I, I honestly believe that uh, someone might be coming from some place that there might be some, someone might have taken a metro, someone might have taken a bus, especially during the pre-COVID time. Uh, and it might happen uh, that that person is coming from a lot stressful area. That person might be coming from his uh, different, like from, from, from his own company, the company where he or she is working right now. Uh, and that person can be quite stressed. So just... Uh, because the person is not looking like dapper, uh, I don't think that should be uh, the criteria to judge someone. And I think an ideal interview will not judge you based on how you look, especially in a technical role. Had it been a marketing role, had it been a sales profile, then uh, it might be right to do that because there you are selling the product. right? There you need to look a certain way. But in this case, I don't think it's right because you are technical, you, you are not facing customer day in, day out. And uh, there is no need for you to kind of uh, look like Rithik Roshan. Moving on. So an ideal interviewer will ask you a question. And if you are struggling to come at the answer, that interviewer will try to help you to reach that answer. Uh, as for example, maybe in the reserve question, I think the ideal approach would be when I mentioned that I have not studied this. I, I think he could have helped me to push me in the right direction. Or instead of saying that's a very rudimentary answer that an actual student would give. Uh, or flawed answer, uh, you would probably uh, tell that, you know, this uh, maybe think from a different perspective. Do you know the formula for reserve or uh, why do, uh, uh, I mean, try try uh, try to help me in certain way so that I can probably gauge the answer. That would show that I have some common sense. And even if I do, don't know the answer uh, directly to the question, then I still can manage to think on spot, right? So that's a great quality to have. Uh, so that's why that's where an ideal interviewer uh, would do. Next point, uh, examine other areas when you're stuck in one. So that means like when someone asks you a question on reserve and you're stuck in that, you, you don't know what is reserve or maybe someone asks you what is non-unit reserve. You know what is unit reserve, but you, you are not able to recollect what is non-unit reserve. And that person should not get stuck in one area or make fun of you or anything like that you know so that person should move on from that area it's okay it's it's absolutely fine that you are not good in one area you are not able to recollect one area there is a lot of interview pressure there is a lot of stress you are coming from a place uh, maybe you are under other you know personal problem etc etc so it, it's okay if you are not able to uh, answer only one question or maybe two questions that that's perfectly fine obviously if you are preparation if you are not prepared for the interview then that's a separate thing altogether uh, but there is no point in getting stuck in one area and asking you only questions from that area just because you are stuck in that area. An ideal interviewer will never do that. However, uh, based on my experience and based on how I have seen other people interview, uh, I don't think ideal interviewer actually exists. That's why it is called ideal interviewer. Very few people would be uh, ideal. Even if I, and when I'm saying this, uh, I, I try to be this sort of interviewer, but even when I am interviewing people, I, I cannot be uh, an ideal interviewer every time. Sometimes my I myself, I have to admit that may stray from that path, right? So uh, I think it's difficult to do, do that in, in, in an interview. And very few people have the kind of ability to do that on a consistent basis. And I'm personally, I'm trying to get to that level. But I believe these are the qualities of an ideal interviewer. If you have got this sort of interviewer and uh, you are still rejected by that person, I think you should be lucky because you have learned uh, that you are not good enough at this point of time. You may, might be very good at a later point of time, but at this point of time, you are, you are not good enough. And you have also learned the art uh, of interviewing, which will help you a lot in in future. So you should be uh, feeling grateful if you have been interviewed by such a person. Moving on. So now we'll come to the different types of interviewer. Uh, 
uh, and there are usually two or two or three types. There are not many uh, types. Uh, usually, uh, an interviewer will be a combination of some some of the ideal interviewer points and some of the other points. Right. So uh, I'll here I'll specifically consider uh, a particular type of interviewer. So this these are the first type of interviews discussion type. So most of the times you will uh, hear people saying that. Oh, the interview was very good. Uh, it was just a discussion. We we had a lot of fun uh, speaking, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So those are the types of interview discussion type. So usually uh, they check for cultural fit and not technical. Usually they are the people who would be in the second round or third round. Uh, they would believe that uh, the first round people would have a uh, first round interviewer have already checked that you are technically good. So the only uh, thing that they need to check is cultural fit. Secondly, uh, usually their age or uh, they are past uh, their prime. So uh, they at one point of time, they might be very good in profit or modeling. But right now, they have forgotten everything. So they have not uh, kept on learning. So even if they wanted to, they could not ask you many technical questions other than probably those questions which are ingrained, ingrained in them, which, which in the, the fields probably they are working uh, on currently. Uh, so that's also one of the reasons that they would try to have a discussion and not a very technical approach. They would try to understand uh, your personality and, and your experiences. So what area you have worked uh, worked in the past or if you are a fresher uh, what are the subjects that you like etc etc overall uh, personality and, and thought process etc so for this sort of interviewer what you need to do is to show your personality right so you need to especially your thought process so you have to kind of uh, uh, probably give an example like this is this is this was the uh, reason i was probably not able to clear st2 and then i i decided that this is the way i'm going to approach right so you need to show your thought process and, and the thought process should include the areas where you have failed and then uh, you have passed, right? So I think that is that is very important because they are only interested in seeing you, if you are a culture fit. They're not interested in technical knowledge, right? So you have to explain your thought process to them in the most, uh, uh, you know, simplified manner as possible. And obviously try to give honest example of your struggles. As I mentioned, they are more interested in your life and how you are as a individual so if you give example of the struggles of your life or professional life may not be uh, your personal life uh, but if your professional life and how you can overcome them or if you have any plan to overcome them in future uh, that would uh, give them a lot of confidence that you are a good candidate you're willing to learn and that is seen as a very good quality uh, in any person and please ensure that in if your interview is discussion type, uh, especially if you are in the second round, third round, that person gets to talk. Uh, Sometimes in an interview, what happens is you are, you are so stressed out, you are so focused on kind of selling yourself that the other person did not get uh, the opportunity to speak. But for this kind of interview to go well, uh, that person needs to know a lot about you. So that's why that person needs to ask a lot of questions. And if you are not letting that person speak, uh, then uh, that person would not be able to know more about you. He'll, his or her uh, perception about you would only be one dimensional. And that's why you need to ensure that that person uh, has a uh, uh, lot of questions and, and, and you answer those questions. Obviously, you can control the flow. Like uh, if, if that person is going in a direction you don't want to go, uh, then you can control the flow. You can change the uh, process. You can give an example from a different direction so that your interview moved in that uh, direction you can control the flow of the stories uh, but you need to let the other person ask the question so you can tell your story so that is very very important moving on now these are the types of uh, interviewers which are uh, mostly present like mostly i have seen this sort of interviewer who are present in core core companies like uh, you know uh, the companies which sell their own product i'm not naming any company here uh, so these are the people who have worked in a process for multiple years and they have uh, they know the in and out of that process as for example say uh, with profit uh, embedded well they, they have worked in that process three quarters or four quarters a year uh, every quarter they have uh, catered to the whims and fancies of their manager and their manager and their manager and finally they appointed actually they have done one process 20 times for uh, 10 years of their life so they know uh, one area very well or maybe two area very well. And that's why they believe that they have very strong knowledge in that area. And they do, right? 
the problem lies with the arrogance uh, if you have knowledge then that's a good thing but if you have over confidence about that knowledge then it's a bad thing right then your judgment about people also uh, get problematic and you would be choosing wrong people you, in, in fact you will be end, ending up choosing people like you uh, and then there would be a lot of clash and cultural issues in in a company so uh, what this type of interviewer would do who are knowledgeable but with a lot of arrogance uh, they will ask you questions from his or her area because they have expertise in only one or two area that's why that person is knowledgeable right so that person will keep you uh, keep on asking questions from his or her area and try to pull you in his or her domain as as the example that i gave uh, if that person is uh, has worked on participating policies or maybe in valuation for say 5 years or maybe in pricing for 5 years right so that person will always keep keep you asking question on from pricing even though your experience is probably in modeling right so that person will not uh, ask you any question from your experience area but that person will test you in his experience area that's why i mentioned that this sort of person will obviously choose person who has worked in pricing only because uh, if you have not worked in pricing how can you answer a very deep knowledge uh, uh, sort of question from pricing uh, and uh, you can only give a reasonable answer right but you do not know the depth of that answer uh, and obviously would not have the depth that this person would be having right so that's why this sort of interview obviously kind of select people who are uh, you know in, in their domain who have worked in their domain only so they will try to show that you know nothing that's why i've written you are they will try to show you are john snow uh, john snow john snow I, I believe that you know who is john snow john snow knows nothing there is a meme from game of thrones so that's what they will try to show you so what is your strategy right uh, your strategy is what i call narayan astra strategy so in mahabharata there is a there is a weapon uh, which is uh, which is called narayan astra so narayan astra means uh, it will attack all your opponents and the more violent your opponent become the more stronger that uh, weapon become and the only way to kind of uh, stop the attack from that weapon would be to submit to that weapon saying that uh, I, I give up and then that weapon will uh, drop or, or go away so you have to do the same thing right in this case when a person is arrogant with knowledge so obviously that person when a person is interviewing you uh, that person is in a better position uh, to kind of uh, control the flow unless that person is a discussion type uh, interviewer if it, that person is like this arrogant with knowledge that person will control the flow so the more that person pulls you uh, in his or her domain uh, the more problematic it is for you to clear that interview so you have to submit saying that okay 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 you what you were saying that is correct but then what you need to do you need to agree to that person so for example that person has asked do you know why uh, the price or premium of term policies are so less as compared to whole life policies and you mentioned oh, because I, I believe the term life is a uh, plain product simplified product uh, that's why uh, it's, it's 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 only it's not covering much uh, many risk so that's why maybe uh, the uh, premium of the term policy is lower uh, then that person asked that uh, do do you know what is the role that reinsurance plays uh, in making the premium of the term policies uh, that low and probably you have no idea about that uh, point. So you have to first of all agree. You have to say, yeah, I, I understand that reinsurance play a tremendous role in lowering the premium. Uh, but I, I, I only have very limited knowledge. So I can uh, tell you that portion. And then if you can help me, probably I can go further. So ask for help. Uh, now, whenever for this sort of person, that this, this sort of person has a lot of ego, right? So whenever you say that uh, I don't know this part, but if you can help me, uh, so then you are kind of telling that I am I am below you, uh, and uh, can you please help me to uh, get to that answer uh, that Nara Nastra strategy was submitting to that person, and that person will be very willing to help you, and they will also like you because uh, they had the need for people to say yes to them, right? these are the type of people that that are kind of uh, we are kind of talking about right now and that's why when you submit to them when you agree with them you have higher chances of getting selected right and obviously in the process you'll learn something because they have the knowledge right they have the knowledge so you are kind of although that person would think that uh, you are submitting to him actually or uh, him or her you are actually using that person to gain his or her knowledge uh, without that person understanding that so you are playing very smartly here 
so that you need to do also uh, praise him for some of uh, his or her honest qualities for example if that person has very good technical knowledge uh, praise him that he, i am uh, mighty impressed with your technical knowledge i am mighty impressed with your coding skills uh, or maybe i am mighty impressed your with your with your progress or how you have moved from uh, maybe uh, analyst to uh, uh, manager level so quickly uh, but do not butter right so uh, it should not be as obvious as saying that you are there praising him or her uh, that should not be uh, very uh, i mean that should not be very upfront right so you has to do it in a more diplomatic way but you have to praise that person once again the reason is that this sort of person has lot of ego right so when you are kind of uh, uh, kind of using that ego against that person without that person knowing you have higher chances of clearing that interview the other type of person who are arrogant but they do not have the knowledge and we have a different term for this type of person who are what we call paper actuaries right so you are a qualified actuary you have cleared your papers but that's all you have done in your life so that's why this sort of person what they would do so paper actually will ask you bookish questions as for example there is no surrender value in term product why is there no surrender value in term product uh, but they and and probably them themselves might have forgotten the uh, you know uh, answer to this question but uh, they remember the questions because that's how they have passed the you know paper right because they know for this sort of question have to write this sort of answer they have kind of memorized that answer so they might have forgotten the answer but they have remembered the question so they will ask those question <clears throat> and, and they will not be interested in knowledge at all right uh, they have no interest in the knowledge but they are only interested in showing off whether uh, you are uh, i mean whether uh, if 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 uh, if that if if that person can show that yeah i am i am a qualified actually or i i am this knowledgeable and you do not have that much knowledge as i have right now so that is the only thing that person would be trying to do so what what you would be doing so in this case other than the uh, like in the previous case you have used the naranastra strategy where you have submitted but in this case you cannot submit because if you submit then that person would be proving his or her point that you are not good right so you have to dominate in one area and preferably that area should be technical so maybe you might say that uh, i know everything about ifrs 17 right i or maybe the gmm model of ifrs 17 in that area you cannot uh, i mean you cannot debate with me and you have to talk openly about that right somehow you have to kind of give that message to that person that i know this area and this is my uh, like uh, you know this is my domain if you move into this domain, I will crush you. But for other areas, I, I might not be that good, right? And this would appear as low. So this sort of person, once again, is looking for uh, their type. And this would give them that image that you are kind of like them and you have a lot of confidence, right? Uh, however, what is important is let them dominate in other areas. For example, if they acknowledge that, yeah, you have a lot of knowledge in GMA model of IFRS 17, but you are you have not cleared papers because obviously someone would uh, this sort of person would have a lot of papers with them so you have not cleared the papers and uh, that is true right so you have to acknowledge that you have to say yeah i have not cleared the papers because maybe i, I was uh, busy in in uh, office or maybe there was some family problem etc cetera, etc cetera. but you are right i have not cleared the paper and from this point onwards, I'll, I'll focus on that as well, right? So you have to let them dominate in other areas, but you have to pick one area, which should be preferably, which should be technical, and you have to dominate them in that area. Also, another very important thing, uh, unlike the discussion type, actually, where you have to kind of let them speak a lot so that they get to know you, right? In this case, you are completely bluffing, right? You are, I am assuming you are bluffing. You might, might not need to bluff. But uh, I'm assuming that you are bluffing because you have got a person who is arrogant and who do not have knowledge and uh, that person is trying to show off uh, and uh, you have to kind of bluff that you are very good in one area. Maybe you are not that good in that area. Uh, so in this case, you have to kind of uh, interrupt them in phases uh, and don't let them ask many questions. Now, one can say that that is not the right approach. You, if you are a kind, 
uh, always if you are interrupting uh, some person repeatedly then that person might uh, uh, might get offended uh, but not with this sort of people if you you have to uh, keep certain degree of frequency once again that will appear as confidence to them and uh, you need to uh, understand that uh, uh, the more that person speak the, the person is trying to show so himself or so herself right so after the interview the the image that person would have about you would be very limited if that person is speaking uh, about themselves because that person is only interested in showing his or her knowledge that person is not interested in knowing you so you have to kind of uh, get around that by doing this so whenever that person is maybe going on and on about uh, himself or herself or about his company or how good or how great that company is uh, you have to kind of stop him in certain manner uh, politely obviously politely and uh, tell more about yourself so that after the interview is over that person uh, has an image of you but uh, not that that image should not be of himself or or his company so i believe that these are the types of uh, interview that that you have uh, one would be the ideal interview obviously if you get that sort of person you are very lucky uh, discussion type in the uh, maybe in the higher rounds and arrogant with knowledge arrogant without knowledge these are the people who would be in the uh, lower rounds and they would be kind of so it's very important that you deal with this type of people otherwise you'll not get to the discussion type and maybe the ideal ideal type now obviously after the interview or when the interview is over when the obviously the interview asks you a question so what do you want to know uh, or or do you have any question for myself so in that case always ask about the hierarchy uh, that's because uh, different HR, uh, uh, as I mentioned in my uh, in my other video, the actual designation of salaries, HRs are very creative. Uh, they can give you manager position and manager might be the starting position. And you might have uh, four years of three years of work ex. So you might be expecting manager would be a slightly mid-level role and you, you might be ending up having a very junior level role. So always, always ask about the hierarchy to understand what level you are being considered for and what maybe what is the level of experience for that uh, hierarchy uh, is there and also when the interview call is scheduled maybe go to linkedin and see uh, if what is the level of experience for people uh, at that level so that will give you a clarity of if if that is kind of going uh, synchronizing with your experience level with your papers etc cetera, etc cetera. also time period for training uh, so i think this is a very important question uh, because many companies today uh, actually focus on training so they would not put you into work from day one however do not ask this question in court uh, because in court there is they believe that they have a lot of workload and they don't believe in training people most of the companies do uh, i mean don't believe in training in court uh, however there are few companies some things are changing so obviously that's a great change that is uh, that is coming and that is happening uh, but most of the core companies do not believe in training training people and they believe in on job training so on the very first day will be uh, given an, a profit uh, workspace and you have to uh, maybe do some calculations, run something and identify and understand the result, right? And, and the, your manager might expect you to kind of uh, explain the result to, uh, uh, you know, to, to him or, or figure out what is going on, uh, which is not the proper thing to do. It's, it's like doing exam style questions of your, you know, actually uh, book without going through the examples. So you first need to give examples and then you need to go to the exam style question, but people ha have limited maturity and common sense. Uh, so, but if you are uh, being interviewed by a KPO or BPO or captive, ask for the time period of training. Like what is the training process? Uh, whether you will be teaching us about the actual software, uh, how much uh, the training would be, whether it is a two week process, whether it is a one month process, et cetera, et cetera, ask about training. And that will also show that you are interested in the profile, you are interested to learn, right? But do not ask this question in code. Then probably this question alone might get you rejected. Uh, never ask for feedback. And I deliver to return the kids. Uh, I think kids ask for feedback. Never ask for feedback after an interview. Uh, I have seen many college students or fresher asking for, sir, can you tell me what is my feedback so that I can improve? Uh, never ask this question. That's because there are two interviewers usually there are two interviewers those two interviewers have not discussed amongst themselves and as i mentioned there might be a bias uh, so this is a stupid question uh, sorry for that using that word but this is actually a stupid question never ask this question it shows that you are highly immature and uh, ask something that probably would 
give you more detail about the profile that and also maybe uh, showing your interest in that uh, profile but if you ask for feedback then then it shows that uh, you have kind of accepted that you are not uh, getting selected and that's why you are asking for feedback and also individual person would give individual uh, feedback and they have not discussed among themselves there might be bias in the feedback that feedback might also not be proper you might be getting some information which might be wrong or which might be incorrect and uh, and after an interview we are not supposed to ask for feedback hr is supposed to tell you although in india uh, we do not have that you know courtesy uh, no, no one probably uh, mail you once you are rejected with the uh, reason for rejection uh, and they should uh, every company should at least if i start my own company one day then this should be a norm uh, for my company if even if someone gets rejected that person should know the reason for that person being rejected uh, that will help you, uh, you know, grow in your life. However, that is not the norm, but I think it's okay. Over a period of time, you will obviously understand uh, where you are lacking and you can also uh, go through the interview process in your mind and determine where maybe you have gone wrong or how the uh, facial expression of the interview has changed, the body language has changed, or at which question you might have been, become rigid at which question you probably have different answer to. Uh, there might be a question you have stumbled uh, and you have struggled to answer, then you can go back and search for that uh, proper answer. In that process, you will learn a lot. Maybe you would get, uh, you will not be able to clear one or two interview, but the third interview will be able to clear because of the learnings that you get got from the previous interviews. Also, another question that I usually ask is, what are the number of rounds? Uh, until uh, mostly the interviewer will tell you if you are in the first round, uh, the interviewer will tell you there might be two rounds or three rounds. If you, if they don't tell you, then uh, I think it's a good question to ask because that shows that you are interested in the in the in the role and you want to get uh, this done quickly, right? And uh, more, when you ask this question, uh, the return question would be what is your notice period if you are working. So th that also means that the interviewer is also thinking that if this person can join quickly, because then I can probably arrange for the remaining rounds quicker because in my round, that person has you know uh, done well. And finally, uh, after an interview, don't try to appear like a genius. I remember there was a person uh, who was from my, uh, you know, my alma mater, St. Javier's School, Kata, and that person has done a CFA, FRM, uh, I think AFRM level one was, and also uh, he is, uh, uh, he, is, he was kind of working, uh, uh, I think working while he has done an internship and in the, uh, throughout the interview appeared like a uh, Einstein and uh, Newton mix, right? So he, I mean, that would never help you. That, that shows that you have <laughs> a lot of uh, arrogance and cultural issues and you will not be a cultural fit. So, uh, and even when I ask this question uh, to uh, that person, like, why uh, do you have any question for, for myself? And that person, I think I think the iconic reply of that person is, no, no, I, I, I think I have answered to all questions in my life. Uh, so I think uh, if uh, you might be that great, uh, but that is not the interview is not the place to show that you are great. If you are great, people will know that you are great and you don't need to show that uh, in an interview. So don't try to appear like a genius in an, in an interview. Uh, I, I think the person, uh, if that person is listening to the interview, because he's from St. JVS Kolkata, that person would be uh, understanding. Uh, I mean, uh, that person would get to know that I'm speaking about him. But yeah, never try to appear as a genius uh, in the interview or after the after the interview. So that's, I mean, that's not the right uh, approach. So I think that's it. Uh, I hope you have enjoyed this uh, video. And uh, I mean, I've been interviewing people for a long time. I think it's been three, three and a half years. Uh, and also when I was in the project management role uh, in SBI Live, I have interviewed a couple of people. Uh, I am also trying to up my game in my uh, own interview uh, that, that I kind of uh, take for others. And uh, yeah, if, if I need to appear for an interview, obviously. And uh, But I think these are very relevant points and these are purely based on experience. Uh, you might differ. Right, you might differ somewhere, and you are welcome to write that in the comment. And uh, if if I if, if I, I I think I'll get to learn uh, from you if you write that. Uh, if you have any difference in opinion, you are welcome to write that. You can uh, challenge me in some areas. That's perfectly fine. Right, a difference in opinion is always 
as long as it is polite and you know it's not trolling it's it's well respected and i i deeply appreciate feedback i would not be in my place uh, had i had people not given me feedback and i have had had i not worked on them so i uh, look forward to that uh, however if you like the content of this channel if you have liked this video please hit the like button uh, please uh, hit the bell icon please subscribe to my channel share this with your friend it will help many people i believe and make it go viral thanks for watching this video and see you in future videos